Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. In this one, I'm going to be doing things a little bit differently since for the first time I'm not going to be T4ing a character when they've come out and I have access to be able to do them. And the main reason for that is, first off, I don't really need to T4 this character. When I took her to level 80, she basically performed all of the functions and provided all the value that I needed in the game. And second off, I don't really need to T4 her because I have so many other characters that basically fill her role. So in the future, when T4 characters come out, unless they up the material that we get just by playing the game, I'm not really going to be T4ing them unless I want to T4 the character or if they provide some improved value for me. I know some people aren't going to be happy hearing that because they really want to see kind of how the character performs at T4. But unfortunately, that's the case given how this game is handling T4 materials. So sorry for that, but that's how it's going to be moving forward. The other thing that's going to be different in this video is that I'm not going to be testing the character's base kit without a damage proc. Most times I test characters without damage procs to see how they do kind of consistently since procs kind of change the performance that you get. So testing without it is usually better. But for this character, pretty much... I, would, I want to say almost everyone has Sharon Rogers, at least with no uniform or even one uniform. And most people have built her for PvE with a damage proc. So that's pretty much what I'm going to be testing. I have a CTP of energy that's reforged to a mighty on her. And I'm going to be testing how the previous uniform works with that and how the new one works with that to give you an idea of the difference between the two. To avoid the clear times being skewed, instead of going to the lower stages and having the animations and phase changes kind of messing with the clear time, I instead went up to the highest stage that I had available, which was 84, just to see how the two uniforms compared within the first phase. The most apparent thing with the old uniform or even the ones before that is that you can't really use the character at higher stages because you need to take hits with your third skill to accumulate damage, so the rest of your skills do a lot of damage, and you can't really do that with this uniform or prior ones because there isn't enough healing for you to stand in the damage and heal back up to full, so you inevitably will just end up having your health chipped down to nothing and can't really use it for high stages. With that being said, the difference in damage output between the old uniform and the new one isn't as significant as you might think. With the old uniform, I was able to hit around 42 health bars with about 3 minutes and 40 seconds left. And with the new uniform, I was able to hit about the same amount, but with 2 health bars more taken off null. So basically, a difference of 2 health bars between the two uniforms. This isn't to say that it's just a 2 health bar difference between the two uniforms, so the damage output improvement isn't really that great. With the fight stretching out longer, I'm pretty sure the improvement is a little bit more than that. But the point that I'm trying to make is that the difference isn't really as huge of an upgrade as you might think like some other uniforms that have come out previously. So the main improvement that you have with the new uniform is that you have that extra healing, which gives you additional survival, as well as the fourth skill now giving you five seconds of invincible instead of four to further increase your survivability and allow you to actually be able to play the higher stages without just dying from lack of healing and your health bar constantly being lowered down to nothing. Besides the healing being increased, it now also applies at the beginning of the skill as opposed to the end of it, which makes it a lot more consistent in activation since sometimes you might have your skill cancelled and other times you might actually need to get that healing before taking the hits, otherwise you might end up dying. So in that regard, it's a lot better than the previous ones. However, besides the functional improvement, I'm not really a fan of this uniform because of the conflicting design. So previously, it was that the 5th and 4th skill weren't iframes of any kind, meaning that it was a lot easier to be able to take hits and fill up your damage accumulation and really get your damage buff up to max and deal a lot of damage. However, with the new uniform, the 5th and 4th skill are now partial iframes, meaning that if you go into them very quickly after using your 3rd skill, you can potentially miss out on a lot of damage taken and not get your damage accumulation and ultimately your buff and overall damage to the max amount. 
Because of this, the uniform kind of performs variably. Sometimes you might clear something very quickly and other times you might not, since you're really dependent on getting most of the damage taken before you go into that fifth and fourth skill. And that kind of leads me into the second problem with this uniform in that it is no longer proc friendly, even though the design of the uniform kind of leans toward using a single skill damage proc. Previously, you would just do your third skill, cancel it kind of right away, and then delay your fifth skill into the fourth skill once you've taken kind of enough damage. With the new uniform, however, it's not really that proc friendly because you have to use the third skill and sort of stay in it, but the third skill activates right away, so it has hits on it, which will trigger your single skill damage proc. And then you will end up accumulating a bunch of damage, but you've activated your proc, so you won't end up procking on the fifth and fourth skill that you want to. This is why it's a little bit weird to recommend a specific PvE build for her, because ideally you would want to use a CTP of energy or destruction, especially a reforged one, because the character excels at world boss legend, and that's what she should be kind of built for she isn't really as great in alliance battle extreme and legend as you'll see but because of her uniform functionality or the way that it works it's kind of easier to use a ctp of rage so i'm thinking that if you want to use her for world boss easily you would probably want a reforged rage rage ctp or even an obelisk with that mini rage proc that carries the proc across multiple skills will likely make the character more consistent since you can stay in the third skill for a little bit longer before going into your fifth and fourth. But with all things considered, a CTP of energy or a CTP of destruction when reforged will ultimately still give her the highest performance in World Boss Legend, but the performance will be a little bit more variable. It has a higher ceiling, meaning that you can potentially do a huge amount of burst damage if you can fill up that damage accumulation on the third skill before the proc occurs on your fifth and fourth. You can see the variance in clear times with the new uniform and a single skill damage proc since in the two clips that I played. In the first one, I was able to clear the first phase with three minutes and 21 seconds remaining. And with no differences whatsoever, I was able to clear it again with three minutes remaining, a difference of 21 seconds in variability just from the uniform and that damage proc like I mentioned. Because of the variance in damage accumulation you get and damage that you deal, sometimes you might be slow on the first phase, which was what happened to me in this particular instance, and I wasn't actually able to finish the fight. I was left with three health bars remaining before time ran out. But again, if I was able to get a little bit more damage accumulation, maybe time things a little bit better, I could easily be able to complete this stage 84, even with Sharon Rogers at level 70. Again, you can see the variance that this uniform has when you're using a single skill damage proc. In the first fight versus Mephisto on stage 64, I was able to clear the first phase with about 3 minutes and 56 or 57 seconds left. And in another instance when I did it again, I was able to complete it with around 4 minutes and 22 and or 23 seconds left with that energy even at level 70 she is able to complete Mephisto with well over a minute left I also did a stage 29 of gore however she wasn't able to complete this not necessarily because she didn't have the damage but mostly because gore moves around a lot and most of her skills are kind of focused in one place so she ends up missing a lot of her hits and also because you can't really stand in the damage that Gore deals and accumulate damage because you don't really have enough survivability to be able to do that. So that is one of the issues when she's still at level 70 and one of the reasons why I wasn't able to complete this stage. I also tested the character in Alliance Battle Extreme, even though she doesn't have a specific day that she falls under in terms of restriction. I tested her during the no restrictions using the benefit of Nick Fury as a leadership and I was able to score around 9.5 million even when missing a bunch of procs on the energy. So I would guess that at level 80 she should be able to hit somewhere around 10 million, especially if you can hit more of those procs. Then with the CTP of Rage you should be able to get at least a million more, so close to 11 million. And then 
when you get her T4, you should be possibly able to cap out, especially if you have a maxed out build, which I obviously didn't have. She also has all of the cancel effects for the various seasons, silence, paralysis, and burn. However, it doesn't really make much sense to build this character specifically for Alliance Battle Extreme, just for the no restrictions day when you can easily do that with a ton of other characters. The rotation that you essentially want to use for her or the one that I went with is to do a quick cancel of the first and second skill to try to fill up your ultimate faster. And then you do the third skill followed by a quick cancel into the fifth skill, which you delay cancel by about a half second when you see her kind of throw the spear in the air and then go into your fourth skill. This is obviously the rotation that you use if you have a single skill damage proc. If you have a rage, you can just stay in the third skill till you see the damage proc occur and then just go into that rotation that I just mentioned. When you've acquired your ultimate skill, you essentially do the same thing, but this time you quick cancel the fourth skill and just finish off with the sixth or ultimate skill instead. As you can see, even though a CTP of Rage tends to perform better in Giant Boss Raid, a CTP of Energy still works, even at level 70, and she's able to easily complete the first phase in that 2 minute window, and complete the fight entirely with about 6 minutes and 10 seconds left. Once you take the character past level 70 is where you'll see her damage output just skyrocket. Not only does she gain that ignore dodge, that really helps at the high stages of World Boss Legend to make all of her hits actually connect, but she also has the additional survivability so that you can use the third skill and kind of stand in some damage to be able to max out that accumulation and hit at your highest damage possible. You can see that with the energy, I was able to complete stage 84 2 minutes and 40 seconds faster. Versus Mephisto, I finished it about a minute and 40 seconds faster, which truthfully probably would have been two minutes faster or even a little bit faster than that if I simply just ignored the spells and stuff in the last phase and just went to deal the damage. The most drastic improvement was versus Gore. Because of that level 80 increase, she not only is able to take more damage and fill up her damage accumulation and damage output faster, but the higher burst damage that she does is able to bypass all of the parts where she misses damage because Gore is moving around all the time and all of that burst damage connects right away. Because of that, she was able to basically reach that 9 health bar mark about 4 minutes faster than when she was at level 70 and basically did it in 60 seconds. Due to those improvements, she was able to complete the entire fight with around 3 minutes and 30 seconds left. Even though I mentioned that you could potentially cap out with Sharon Rogers when you have her at T4 with a Rage and with a pretty decent build, that doesn't really seem to be the case in Alliance Battle Legend. There, if you try to take hits to build up your damage accumulation, you end up losing a ton of points, so it's a little bit counterintuitive and the character doesn't really work for that mode. With the Mighty Energy and the aid of White Fox's support, I was only able to score around 3.4 million, and from the testing that I've done with other characters, if they have any kind of viability for the mode, they should be able to score around 4 to 4.5 million with a single skill damage proc, which she obviously wasn't able to even at level 80. Just for reference, my Shuri with Mighty Destruction and without the aid of White Fox's support and just at level 70 is able to score pretty much the same thing, sometimes even going as high as 3.7 or 3.8 million. With the character at level 80, she was able to solo giant boss raid about 30 seconds faster, and I was able to complete the fight with about 6 minutes and 40 seconds left. I wouldn't really be able to tell you how much quicker the T4 would make it, I would guess maybe around 30 seconds faster at the very least, but because the character does have to take damage to get maximum damage out, other characters might still be the best performers for giant boss raid as opposed to Sharon Rogers, but nevertheless, she is still a pretty good character in this mode too. With the current PvP meta focusing on Super Guard Break and Iframe Ignore, Sharon Rogers is obviously not really designed for PvP game modes. However, one thing to note from the previous uniforms to this one is that with the 5th skill and the 4th skill now getting partial iframes, she does become much better in the mode because she can avoid damage, and if the opponent tries to do their iframe ignore skill and she's done her third skill, 
then the lingering damage from the 5th and 4th could potentially wipe out the character even if she ends up dying. Besides that, the other improvements that this uniform provides over the old one is that you now get 5 seconds of invincible on the 4th skill, which is upped from 1 second that it previously was, and the AI actually opens with it, so you have the benefit of getting that right away. On top of that, she also gained 30% damage mitigation, as well as the increased healing going up by about 25%. If you don't really care about PvE and want to make the character more usable in PvP, like I've mentioned for other characters that aren't really designed for PvP, to make them more consistent versus non-meta characters, a CTP of Authority is usually your best bet. You get the damage mitigation from the steel of the authority if you're able to reforge it, as well as the invincibility and damage accumulation. However, if you want a chance at the character being good versus meta characters, then you really want that burst damage from the CTP of Destruction that you get from the proc, as well as the penetration that it provides so that you can quickly go through the invincibility of the opponents. I think that with the destruction, Sharon Rogers could actually be pretty good in Alliance Conquest since she has decent damage mitigation, opens with the invincibility, and also has good skill priority. You can see that even with an energy, I was able to wipe out that first set that had Null and Heimdall on it, which are actually pretty good characters in Alliance Conquest. At level 80, I tried almost the same fight. Unfortunately, this time she did end up losing to Null, However, at the same time, she did show her consistency since she was able to wipe out the enemy team and get Null down to one health. Meaning if the opponents didn't have immortality or the revive effect, she would have ended up wiping them out. And again, you have to keep in mind that this is still with an energy, so she doesn't actually have guard break immunity. There is one thing that I didn't mention in this video, and that is that the old uniform could potentially be more consistent than the new uniform, if you're able to get the character to T4. The T4 provides you with healing, meaning that the old uniform could actually be made usable at high levels because you are getting that health back and you can stand in those damage pools, poison pools or whatever to fill up your damage accumulation while still being able to get your health back from the T4 skill. With the old uniform not having iframes on the 5th and 4th skill, and with the combination of getting healing from the T4 skill, the old uniform could potentially end up being the more consistent and quite possibly the better performer overall compared to the new uniform. However, for most people, the crystal cost is much cheaper to get the new uniform than actually having to spend the T4 materials on the character to get them upgraded that way. Because of that, I would say that for most accounts, this would be a top pick for a Blast character, especially if you're trying to push to World Boss Legend or push to the higher or final stages of World Boss Legend, where I'm pretty sure that you need a character that has the specifications and restrictions that Sharon Rogers' uniform provides. Again, I know that some of you might be disappointed that I wasn't able to cover the T4 aspect of the character, but unfortunately, until they raise the T4 material drop on a daily basis, I can't really keep up with the T4 characters that come out, especially when they're doing up to three a month and also include native tier twos when it's not really sustainable to be able to do so. I'm really hoping that that gets addressed with the anniversary patch or the ones following it because I won't really be able to cover all of the T4s that come out unless they do that. Hopefully this video did give you a bunch of information on the character though, and for a lot of people, including myself, you don't even need Sharon Rogers at T4. Level 80 performance that she provides is easily able to do pretty much all endgame content. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and possibly share the video with others to help them out and help myself out. As always, I appreciate people taking the time to watch these, so thank you, but the video is now over.